Well, I got my next little lipo pack in the mail. Uh, it needs some surgery, but for twenty dollars, you can't go wrong. It's pretty much a brand new six cell pack, twenty C, five amp hour. But uh, one of the cells was bad, so uh, he pulled it off. It was a puffed cell. So now I just have to change the wiring around, and I'll have another five cell, five amp hour pack. So over here, I have three already, and then I have a couple of old doctored up packs that I've been using just to get by. So I'm going to try to fix this one up and uh, put it into commission. So let's see how it goes. Basically what I have to do is uh, take the negative wire that no longer goes to a cell because the cell has been removed and I have to move it over to this terminal right here. And then after I do that I just need to change the balance leads around a little bit and we'll be good to go. I can throw it on the battery medic and see what it does. This also came with a 10 gauge wire and bullet connectors and as you can see I uh, took my adapter out of the kit and it plugs right into it and it changes it over to Dean even though the wire size is a little bit smaller and I have my parallel charging board busted out and uh, plugged into my IMAX B6 charger and I separated my Dean connectors into male and female bags just so I don't get confused so let's try to get this battery working. So I'm getting prepared to do some soldering and while my soldering iron is heating up uh, one of the first things I do is obviously get a voltage meter and I just check to make sure that where I'm going to be replacing this negative lead over to this terminal is actually the proper place and I make sure that it has the 5 cell voltage of 20 volts over there and uh, now that I have confirmed that uh, everything's good to go. I also I cut the negative balance lead off of the old spot where it was right here and I'm no longer going to be using it. Uh, I'm bringing this pack from 6 cell down to 5 cell so what I'm going to do is just shorten up the balance lead plug. I'll just uh, cut the last one off and use my little metal cutting scissors here and trim it up and it'll fit right into the ports fine. Uh, it's not the most proper way to do it but it is the easiest and it, there's really no need to replace the balance leads if you're going to be cautious like I am and it's as simple as that I just grabbed a pair of uh, Klein wire strippers and I lined it up properly right to the end of the balance connector and it does a pretty clean cut right off the side and as you can see there's the negative that I took off and I'm just going to take these scissors here and trim up the corners and make it so it's not sharp or uh, going to cut anyone. And then we can start soldering our main lead. One thing I'm not sure about how I want to deal with yet is because uh, this has a circuit board on top of it. And as you can see, now that there's a cell missing, it kind of overhangs. Uh, I kind of want to get rid of that, but it's going to affect my negative terminal on the right side here. The left side one I can just break off, which isn't a problem. But I'm not sure if I want to keep the right side one or not. I guess I'm going to dig into it a little and see what we get. Alright, so I removed the negative lead with a soldering iron. And I took a small pair of pliers here and I broke off that corner of the board with that big solder blob down there on the table. And I'm left with this. Uh, it started to get a little weak here in the center when I was breaking it, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. What I did for now was I put a little lick of tape under here just so the connection is not hitting the side of the pouch cell. And what I may do is just kind of bend it over flat after I solder it and uh, take as much of the board away as I can. That'll be a, a simple solution and uh, with minimal tools here to work with. So let's see what we can do. And we have success. I moved the negative lead over to the other side of the LiPo pouch. Uh, the first thing I did was I cleaned out the tip of my soldering iron and I heated up the tab and I pulled the old tab off of the sixth LiPo pouch that was uh, bad and it was uh, cut off by the old user. So I just uh, took it out of there. And after that I was able to put my negative on and then I added a little bit of solder over that just to make it a little more secure of a connection and I'm pretty happy with the results look at that not bad at all exactly what I would like to see everything's uh, sitting at 
and that is awesome. That was a quick, simple five minute fix, and now I have a working five amp hour five cell pack. I can get this thing uh, ready for a ride and see what we can do with it. All right, and here's the finished product. I just uh, did a simple wrap of electrical tape all the way around it. I made sure not to pull too tight and uh, squeeze the cells, even though there shouldn't be a problem in doing so. I just tend to try to just make it wrap around loosely. And there you have it. Cells ready to be charged up. Packs ready to be used. And uh, not bad for a $20 finished product. As you know, the battery pack's ready to be used, and I have it hooked up to my parallel charging board. And I am charging right now, and the cells are at 19.42 volts, charging at 1.8 amps. So after I top the battery pack off, I'll be able to put it over to my old pack here. And the reason I'm not parallel charging yet is because I have two new packs that I'm going to top off. Then I'll top off the rest of these old packs, and then once I discharge them in series, then I can start parallel charging. So for now, I'm going to continue charging single file, just to keep things balanced. So let's top these off and see how it goes. Well, it looks like everything's all set. Uh, the IMAX B6 just beeped away, saying that the charge is full, and the pack is at 21 volts. Everything went well with the charge. I charged it at a nice low current. So now we just got to discharge it and see how it works.